Good morning, everybody. Good morning. Um, let me try to introduce myself. My name is Charles. I'm a service designer. I'm based in Italy. I've had experiences of like about four or five countries from Nigeria. I'm from Nigeria. Um, I moved to the UK where I studied industrial design. Then I moved to South Africa. Then I moved back to the UK and then in Italy now. Um, I don't like to talk about my academic career, but I have a PhD and I work as a postdoc, but mostly I'm a consultant in um, service design and industrial design. I work with technology, but I don't see myself as a technologist. I try to use technology to create things from apps to websites to every kind of product. I work with people that are into coding. I work with people that are doing really hardware. So, but, um, yeah. So I want to tell you about digital transformation and what digital transformation is all about. So digital transformation is like the change associated with the use of technology. So you have all these technologies transforming our society from the robots to artificial intelligence to cryptocurrencies to big data, most of the things you heard about just now. They are changing healthcare, they're changing transportation, they're changing the way we live, they're changing the way we work. We have a lot of productivity, right? Um, I think it's a very good thing that we have all these technologies going this way they are going. So I, I want to tell you something about the history of um, computing and how the technology has um, transcended from the start up till now. So um, I think we have the first era of computing, which are the big computers that are built in the United States, um, very big, um, very little storage um, space. And then we have the second era, where, which is the coming of the internet, and uh, which made us to have everything that we need to have. Communication became instant. Then we had the third era, which is um, we call the, the, the social web which brought people things like people started to make input inside technology, which is gave us the Facebook and the Twitter and the blogging and all those kind of stuff. Then we have the fourth era, which is smart things, which is Internet of Things, Industry 4.0, artificial intelligence, which is like the level we are now or even beyond that. But if you look at this history, this era of technology, you find out that Starting from the beginning, technology was tech-centered. You know, people just go into a workshop and push technology. Like you start to code. Like from the Big Gates time to the Steve Jobs, they start to code, they start to work, and they come up with something, and then they sell it to us. Then we start to come down the areas. We find out that the users started having input inside technology. It started becoming meaningful. Then if you come down to the fourth era, Internet of Things, Technology becomes ubiquitous. You have very little input. People don't have anything. Technology talks to themselves. Cars talk to themselves. The sensors work. The cameras are working. And they are, they are running the data and giving you feedback. It becomes like speed. So one thing we learn about this history here is that experience actually do matter. If you have a user-centered methodology to how technology is being run. But one thing that most technology companies, especially from this era that created the social web, was that it has very little thinking about how our culture, where our culture is going. How do we begin to think what people have? And the digital transformation, which is good. What happens now is that we have a lot of issues with being tech-centric, which is pushing technology to create something without thinking about culture, thinking about users, and where the technology might take us. So, so we have this transformative experience. This is just something where technology is trying to you know, change our industries, the healthcare, the, the, the wind, the transportation, everything else. So, but there is this problem that I want to get to. So we have this technology, which is good. It transformed our industries and everything. But then, not being user-centered, not being focused on experiences, not being focused on culture, we created a problem on its own. So we have this inequality. 
people are being pushed outside their jobs by digital technology, digital transformation on the internet. A lot of people lost their jobs. Um, the people that used to use the manual photographing, you now have um, the, the cameras on our phones. They lost their jobs. And those people are mainly old people, disadvantaged, very poor, or very young. Then we have the skills gap. We have the jobs. Then I'm interested in fake news. Let's talk fake news. So we have this fake news as a result of the social web, the Facebook and the Twitter and everything. So what happens? Somebody goes to Iraq and say there is a weapon of mass destruction. One person, maybe a blogger, a weapon of mass destruction. He comes back, posts it on his blog. Everybody carries the news. We have weapon of mass destruction in Iraq. And then we go to Iraq and then we come out and there is no weapon of mass destruction. What happens? Two billion people distorted this news along the line. We can't find out who. We can't trace back to the person that started this thing. So fake news is something really trending at the moment. I think it's of an interest of people trying to work with digital technology or people trying to understand how this is happening. What happens in fake news is this. The tech companies are winning. The platforms are winning. They are making money. The politicians are winning. But you and I, we are not winning. So this fake news, there is a way we could go about it. If we sit down here from now to December, we can not find out how to solve fake news. But if we are sat down when we created these platforms and said, let us see how people share news. How do we share news amongst each other? How do we communicate? How do we transfer information among three, four, five billion people? We might actually find a solution if we started from the beginning. So my approach here today is to tell you that if you start from beginning to focus on how technology will solve problems, how it will address culture, if you want to create a media app, if you want to create something really interesting, you have to focus on the users. So, um, so let me go to something called experience. I, I have this a little bit of um, anecdote. Um, it says that it is not the tram that makes the transportation a successful experience. It is the shadow. Imagine we have this big infrastructure. Everything is working. We have big signposts on the train station. But when it is the time for the tram to come, the train to come, it doesn't come. It doesn't just make sense. If we create technology that people could not use, if we create technology that doesn't factor in our culture, that doesn't tap what makes you and I to tick, it doesn't just make sense. We just create something that just lots of big data and no insights. Nothing is really, really happening. So that is what I'm saying here today. So I wanted to introduce you to a methodology that helps us to be able to understand how people can move forward. Um, that is what we call service design. So, um, but before I do that, I will tell you a story about that was told by some guy. He's an IoT guy. He's based in London. He's Marcus Kesh. You probably know him. Um, Marcus Kesh. He used to be on our platform. Um, he's based in London. Um, this guy was working for MIT Media Lab in Europe. Uh, is based in, in Dublin. So at that time, around 2000, 2002, they were started starting to push the social web. So what they were doing was they were merging credit card data with your heartbeat rate. They merged the two data. They were able to find out your spending pattern at a particular point in time. So we are having technology way, way ahead of time. So the, the, the head... The, the, the CEO of MIT uh, Media Lab from, from MIT in the United States came to visit um, their, 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 their partner um, company in, in Dublin. And then he had a meeting with the department and he said that the social aspect of technology has no future, has no impact on the future of technology. So he scrapped the department. Two years later, Facebook came in, Twitter came in, MIT missed out on being the first to develop the social web. It is something that the stories that they tell, you find out the kind of money they put into research is not. So th that gives you like a paradox between being tech-centered, 
or focusing on human centered, which looks at the social aspect because it is the social that will drive the technology. It is the usage that we're seeing that will drive the technology. If you create something that people, I mean, it, it, it can go anyway. You understand? It can go both ways. There is no better way to do it. But the point is, if you focus on the experience, if you focus on the human side, it means it makes both business sense as well as the tech sense. So you can sell something that people will actually use rather than you know, spending much time to convince people. So um, let me introduce you to service design. I will not tell you what service design is. I will not tell you about the methods or how to do it. I will introduce you to it, and then I will show you a project that I did recently this year in Italy um, of how we, did, we do service design. So um, service design is the shaping of experiences so that they really work for people. So imagine this Disney experience where you walk into Disney. Everything has been created to just blow your mind. And you leave Disney, maybe you spend three, four, five hours or the whole day. All through your life, you can have a better experience than what you have in Disney. It's, it, is, it is silly, you understand? Walt Disney was, very, was a futurist ahead of his time. So he created all those things to be able to make sure, okay, let's give an example of those kind of experiences in business, in real business world. Amazon, what they want to do is to own your shopping experience. I can't imagine shopping on a weekend and go to one single shop to buy everything I need. I may at least spend like, go to three, four, five places, buy groceries here, you'll be able to buy some, some coffee here, you'll be able to buy some, some cereal here, and then you come get back home. But Amazon went from the business side to be able, they want to provide everything you need. They want to own your shopping including the data, including the technology, including the facilities itself, buying things, everything you want to shop from books to laptops to phones, that is what they are doing. They want to be able to, in the next few years, be able to sit in your house and order anything you want. So that is how experience, that is how people think around the ecosystem. People are thinking around the ecosystem, not just the platform, but what do you need at a particular point in time as a shopper? They have the data, they are mining this, and they are crafting an experience for you at every point in time. So the shaping of service experiences so that they really work for people. So let me now, let me now introduce you to this project we did in Italy. Um, we have this big utility company in Italy, and um, they approached me and my colleagues, and um, what they wanted to do was they have this data that they have about customers that a lot, a, a huge number, about 30 to 40 percent, we are not paying bills. And it was kind of irregular that this is happening. So, and that means dropped revenue and everything. So they approach us and say, how can you make sure that we think that why people are not paying their bills is because we don't have payment platform because Italy, I will tell you, is kind of mechanical. It's not so much, they don't use so much, they, they, they rely on cash. So most of the payments, you have to go to the post office to be able to pay your bills. And so they believe they have to get a platform. So they, they came to us and said, okay, do a platform, a payment platform. We think that why people are not paying their bills is because we don't have um, enough payment options. So we looked at the problem and we said, okay, no. We don't think, they, we have a hell of a lot of data that we went through. We said no. And we don't think that is the reason why. Because um, people, not just that people don't have enough payment options, but there may be something more. So we started to probe more. So instead of just having the conception, preconception that people are not paying their bills because they don't have payment options, we tried to reframe the questions. And we said, how might we improve people's interaction? and understanding of our charges. So what are we doing? We went from just trying to see how we could do payment options to broadening the context to involve interaction with the charges. So this led us to, this led us to, to go into a research. We tried to interview about 100 homes, and we asked them questions, and we created a storyboard 
for each of the customers. Create a story board, we came to your house, we asked you a question like, um, how, how, why are you not paying bills? So this is a sample that I created <laughs> of a typical customer and whatever is going on in his home. So this guy is a very busy guy. He works nine to five, he's very busy. He doesn't have time to be able to pay his bills. The bills does not arrive on time. Most of the times, the postal service, they miss the bills. So it comes like one, two months later. When you don't see the bills, why would you pay? You know? So it takes like, and the bills start to model up, it start to model up, it start to get complicated. So these problems, we start to interpret them one by one. So for each and every one of the customer, they have a story. This helps us to connect emotionally with what is happening at the homes. It's, 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 it's really, really um, tedious for us to um, interpret everything that is going on. Um, it takes a lot of work to be able to create this kind of story and be able to, to, to go through them personally. But if, you are a, if, we are, if you're working with technology, this is where you actually, when you sit down in the night and you start to read people's story, this is where you start to find the solution of what technology would do. So imagine we have to go through this together as a team and have a big map in the rooms and we go through this story and we break out the points that we think are very important. We start to put them one by one on a post-it note and match the points together. We think these are the important issues. So, so, um, so the design process we use, we try to use this four-step process that we think is important. We think that the, 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 the way to do service design or the way to do service design, yeah, or design thinking, whatever you call it, is to first of all have an insight which is through research, through interviews, through case study, through marginal of data, whatever you have. Um, we have the insight, first of all. And then we, when we have the insight, we created the points that we think they are very important to, to the users. And then we start to think along these, um, these ideas. We start to bring up ideas of, OK, this person said um, that he comes back late and the bills get missed, so he never gets the bill. So how do we make sure that there is constant billing? How do we make sure that this person has the bill online? You could find out now, even by nodding your head, I know you are thinking along a solution, right? <laughs> so somebody is missing the bill. The bill doesn't come. So what is the solution? It means he has to have the bill always with himself. He needs to have the bill like constantly. He needs to be present with the bill, right? So these are the kind of things we start to think. Each of the research questions that we asked and we brought out we start to think, we start to brainstorm and say, okay, this is a possible solution for this. This is a possible solution. So we have like hundreds, 200 ideas. So now, we now boil down these ideas, match them together, we limited the ones that are not possible, the ones that are costly, the ones that is not feasible, and we get all of them together. And then we start to do prototyping. We start to prototype around the service. We start to create prototypes. Um, a prototype is just something tangible. It may be something tangible just to show that something really works. So we just bring up papers together. We have um, some tools that we use to do it, like um, a, a, some post-it notes. We have, um, what do you call it, Lego bricks. So we start, we try to create something abstractly. Some will be apps. We created websites. Um, we created a, a simplified version of the paper, just something just to make sure that we give um, tangibility to our ideas. Then um, the implementation is just, um, implementation could be a report, it could be actually creating the project, whatever works for you. But um, for this project, we tried to implement it in phases. So we did the first phase with about um, 1 million people, which is around the whole Veneto region, which is being tested. So it's a very wide project with a very big funding. So um, this is just the same thing as, um, as I said before, which is the methodology. You start with the users, you create a story, and then you go to the core service, understand what is happening. Um, you have design thinking here, which is still much, very much the same thing that I said now, which is you start from the insights, which is the research. 
We try to ideate around the research problems that we identified, create some ideas, and then you prototype the service quickly, and then you do the implementation. So, um, so we try to, so we, these are the deliverables that we produced during this time. So one of the first things we did was to, um, one of the research problems that we identified was people, some people, mainly immigrants, we are having a hard time understanding how the billing works. So the first thing we did was to make sure that we simplify the billing process, how it works, how the communication reads. So you pick up your bill and you don't see jargons on it. You understand exactly how much you have to pay. So people have this instance like when you got to come to a bill, you get your bill, there are things you want to know, which is number one is um, what is the cost? How much am I supposed to pay? Then why am I paying this? These are the questions people ask. So every other thing really doesn't matter. What matters then maybe the date, right? So we try to let us remove, let us start this process from the bottom up. Let's find out actually what people wanted to know. And we created a simplified billing process. As in you take your paper, one single page, you understand everything. So it takes a lot to find these things. They are very simple, but they are very difficult. This is why. Every, so another thing is the mobile app. So we try to create different channels for, for the billing. So the different, pro, the different um, platforms or channels is we have the mobile app, we have the simplified paper bill, and then we have the desktop. And uh, what, uh, well also what we tried to do was create a system that syncs all these things together, that understands everything. So everything is the, how the mobile app, how the paper billing looks, or how it feels, how it reads, is how also the website or the app is. So there is uniformity across all the platforms. So it makes sense a lot. So another thing is we try to add other payment options from credit cards to PayPal. So every other option, we give people more options other than just to go and pay in the post office or something like that. So um, another thing is people need to, we understand that people need to uh, make sense of what, is, what their billing is. People need to make sense of what you are paying, even not just now. So we, want, we went a little bit further to say, OK, what do we do with all this data? What do we do with all this information? We can actually give people more. So what we do is that we advise the company to match the data they have with the normal local weather data on what is coming. So you have the winter coming. We have two months to the winter. We are telling you how much you might be paying per month. So we try to sync that and give you in the app. So you have summer, you have winter, you have the cost. They br we break it down for you and say, OK, if you're planning for, for winter, this is how much you're planning to spend from, say, December to about March or April. So people have a sense of how much they are paid. And we give you options if you even want to deposit something in advance of winter, just in case. So also, we thought about how do we sell other platform products. So we start to look at, OK, um, in a typical house of an Italian family, um, it's normally the, 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 the heating systems are quite like mechanical. So we could start to digitize it and bring in other products that could be enabled to, to help out. So we brought in um, IoT enabled thermostat, so which provides real time billing. And this syncs with the app. So also the digital power saving bulbs. Um, we have mobile control, which means remotely you can be able to switch on your heating and turn it off and things like that. So um, this makes sense for the company as well as the consumer because um, you don't have to pay for these installations. It has to pay for itself over time. So other things we did, uh, we tried to put in some payment reminders and then we put more options for digital payment. So um, what I just told you today, um, may not make sense a little bit if you, if you, if you are new. Uh, somebody said he's, he's a designer, yeah? Designer, right? OK, any other person advertising? Uh, so it could make sense of what I'm trying to say. Um, experience really do matter. When we are designing technology, when we are working with technology, it's important to focus 
on the experience side. So what are we learning here today? Value. So one thing you should know um, all through your time here at BTS or wherever you find yourself in the future is to know that um, focus on the value and not the product. You want to focus on the value you want to give people. And the value is usually comes in experience. The value is the service you provide to people. So if you focus on the data, if you focus on the artificial intelligence, if you focus on the robots, you miss the point. The point is that the robot is supposed to solve something and not the other way around. So focus on the value, focus not on the product. Another point is freedom versus burden. What are you trying to do with technology? What are you trying to do with data? Or the tech business that you want to do, or the startup you wanted to do. You wanted to make people's lives simple. You wanted to provide freedom to people and not like use technology and data to overload people. So you collect all this data and you don't provide privacy to people. It doesn't just make sense. So the, 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 the question of technology is to provide freedom. So another thing is be user-centered. As you go about your work, if you lose sight of the user, you're losing it. The people that are interested in business here, yeah, this is very core. Cool. You can't miss it. The user is your point. That is where you make your money from. So if you're not providing value for them, if you're not focusing on what they want, you're going to lose out. The, your competition is going to take it up and go wrong with it. So this is what we learned. So um, I'm not just saying all these things. Just I'm not making up stops just to tell you a story about value and this thing. Um, September 12, 2017, Accenture wants to be the world's biggest experience agency of record. Accenture is a technology consulting firm. Everybody is moving to experience. Experience is the next big thing. From Google to Facebook to Tesla, everybody. If you go to their website just to check, the number of experienced designers outweigh the number of technologists there. Seriously. Everybody wants to get somebody that understand how experience works. So you see something like, we are seeking for an interaction designer, user experience designer, um, name is service designer, industrial designer, product designer. These are the people that understand how to craft experience using this process of service design that I've told you. They might call it different things, but it's still the same. So what is actually happening? Every consultancy in the world is now running into experience. Everybody wants to be part because experience is a very big industry. So they turned their name and added a surface to it. Accenture Interactive, Deloitte Digital, EY Serene, Digital McKinsey, IBM, Inter what are they fighting for? They are fighting for experience. This is a big industry. So no matter where you're going to find yourself, today, tomorrow, during your BTS experience, during your time here, what you learn to do is, is not just for you to solve this problem of fake news or this problem of inequality. Uh, I mean, if you find a way, you let me know. <laughs> I'll be, <laughs> but if you find a way, let me know. But the most important thing as, 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 as somebody that is an intellectual, is to be able to go out there and the companies you will work with among your teams to be able to bring the sensitization to people about these issues through your work. So that is why I love this Italian designer. He said that the responsibility of the intellectual is to awaken the collective conscious. So you're not just going out to just solve a problem. You are going to also bring others to join the race and be able to drive the transformation forward. I hope you enjoy your time here in um, BTS, and I wish to see you guys um, again, and we have this interaction. So enjoy your time. Thank you very much. I appreciate it.